Hi, everyone. Max here from It's the Pitchers. Since we've recorded this podcast, Dune Part 2 has been delayed until next year. John and I did our fall movie preview, and we assumed that, well, that would have been safe. A lot changes in a week. <laughs> en- enjoyed the episode. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode number 156 of the It's the Pictures podcast. My name is John Gilpatrick, and joining me, as always, is... Max Colville. How are you doing today, Max? Oh, we're at the tail end of summer here. I'm I'm ready to, to switch over into fall. Like we've already gotten some fall decorations up in our house, believe it or not, like That's October nice. stuff. Very good. We uh yeah, I noticed out the window here today that like the first there's a few like brown leaves that had fallen from the tree and I was like this is amazing i'm so excited yeah uh, we, we broke down and bought a, a 12 foot skeleton this year so okay we'll, we'll uh, have one of those in our yard okay there you go we don't have one of those but you know there's here's to wishing i guess <laughs> <laughs> um we uh were talking a little bit before the uh recording here started about you know football's upcoming and we're jazzed about that are you feeling optimistic or pessimistic about your pats i gotta be optimistic john it's always it's it's, it's a long season (laughs) you you gotta hope that they hit 500 yeah yeah yeah. i mean i think every fan is optimistic about their team to an extent maybe cardinals fans feel a little differently a couple other teams but like it's funny i think about the preseason where it's like during the regular season, I'm watching all these games and I see like every team and following fantasy and all this other stuff. But like during the preseason, I'm really only paying any attention to the Eagles. And like all, all of it is like, oh, Jalen Hurts had a great throw today. Oh my God, Jalen Carter just like got through the O line and had a you know, would be sack. Like it's all good news about your players. So I feel like every team ends up being really optimistic and. You know, I listen to this podcast. I'll give them a little shout out here. I know some of the fans of the podcast listen to our show called 32 Fans, and uh, they preview every team with a fan uh, of that team and ask them to predict the record. And like every team is like three to four games, like overly optimistic that like the <laughs> consensus of me is like, no, this is really like the Texans year. Uh, uh, and you know, it's, it's always a pretty good laugh, but. Um, you know, I'm not going to begrudge anybody, you know, optimism. I was super optimistic last year about the Eagles. And when, you know, I think most people thought like they had a chance of making the playoffs, but it wasn't like certainly set in stone and they exceeded expectations. So, you know, like if that could happen to any team on any given year, if everything breaks right. Yeah. Well, luckily you have your quarterback of the future on, on the Eagles. And- Hopefully. Yeah, he, I, I saw that he's going like uh, number one QB overall in uh, in fantasy drafts this year. So. Well, hard not to, hard to argue. I feel like because of like his ability to run the ball, he's you know uh, got the best combination of arm and legs. I feel like of the elite quarterbacks, you know, Lamar Jackson's maybe Justin Fields more prolific with their legs, but don't aren't quite as great throwers with as many weapons and. You know, the opposite, you could say, about Justin Herbert and uh, Mahomes and and others who are going to just do a lot more with their arm, uh, but can't make up for it with rushing. So um, I support it, just hoping, you know, we can get through the season mostly healthy and and make another run. Yeah, I I hope that the... uh... Bill O'Brien, uh, offensive coordinator job, uh, translates to a better Mac Jones this year for the Patriots. <laughs> sure, yes. I, uh, don't we all? <laughs> um, but uh, I'm, I'm glad I won't be around to watch the Patriots-Eagles opening night game because yes. that's not going to be great. <laughs> well, d- speak for yourself. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I have fears about the Patriots' offensive line, and I don't have any fears about the the Eagles' f- defensive front seven so (laughs) yeah yeah, nor should you although you know i have some slight fears about the patriots defense which looks fairly stout so uh anything can happen yeah and uh i'm doing uh, my fair share of fantasy drafts i I, i'm I'm actually a commissioner of of one of just friends this year and 
um that, that should be fun to to run a league and be behind the scenes of course like there's so many different things going on that it's crazy to keep track of everything you're gonna have to settle disputes are you prepared for that yeah considering this is like a no entry fee league there's there's gonna be very little like i'm mad (laughs) (laughs) i'm coming out of fantasy football retirement i think you know maybe forgot but i had retired last year i did not compete in any fantasy football which was pretty enjoyable if i'm being totally honest but this year i'm coming out of retirement because one of my close friends is starting a league and i'm excited because we're having our draft at like an uh indoor golf simulator so i think that's going to be pretty enjoyable just when you thought you were out they pull you back again. yeah it's just like <laughs> they needed a guy they don't, there's only eight and i was just like yeah, this is not gonna happen if i don't do it what the hell <laughs> Yeah, we, we have we have a big uh, golfing uh, entertainment complex opening, like maybe twenty minutes from my place. Like, a, it's a top golf place. Oh and yeah, then, sure, right. Uh, and I'm just like, I don't know if we need that in Rhode Island or how many people play golf. A lot <laughs> but, of top golf. Um, but you like the top golf? I mean, I enjoy it. Yeah, it's a fun time. I mean, like it's for casuals. You know, it's just like if you ever felt like trying out swinging a golf club, like go to top golf. Oh, okay. uh, so, so, yeah, so that's, that's a your good endorsement. social ex- yeah, experience. Like I did it with my sister and her wife and my family. Like it's just a fun night out, you know? Yeah. Um. So cool. Well, that's all the uh, non film related topics that I think we wanted to cover. Although um, you did mention to me that you're going to see Bruce Springsteen tomorrow night as of our recording. So it's kind of exciting. Uh, is, is he going to, is he going to be up for the the task? I guess is the question. Oh, what do you mean? Like, well, he's been like, you know, uh, I think he's missed a few shows, right? He's been like ill. Yes, the course of the it, tour. ill. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, 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 I, you know, John, I, they, I don't think they want to say the c word. I, I think that's kind of what it is. Well, you have to be more specific than that. What is the c word? Because that has a lot of connotations. The c o v i d word. Oh, is that right? Uh, well, that's that's what I would guess. Yeah. If he's just gonna like miss a week and be like, oh, I can't go on, and then like play again next week, and I mean that that's what kind of makes sense to me. And I mean that seems like a weird thing to be coy about in 2023, but fair enough. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm imagining you've been to a Springsteen show. I have, yeah. I went yeah. for my 21st birthday actually, which is fun. Me and my yeah. dad. I've been once too, and I I thought it was just a really great time. He puts on quite a show. He, he plays the whole the whole time. He doesn't have an opener and. You know, he, he rocks out for like three hours and um, I had never gone with my wife. It's been that long since I've seen him. So I was just like, oh, you know what? You have to go see him and, you know, do this. And, um, yeah, you know, it'll be a fun time at, at, at Gillette. So very good. Well, I hope you enjoy that. Uh, you'll have seen it by the time people listen to this, I suppose. But um, but very cool. So um, we were going to talk this week about fall movies you know we mentioned up front that max has his skeletons out and i've got a few old leaves on the lawn and so hey like falls here might as well be and uh movies are gonna start being good now right yeah how pump, it works? pumpkin spice latte is coming out tomorrow yeah you know i don't care uh, yeah we, we've talked we've about talked that, about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this has been on for eight years there's no way we haven't covered my pumpkin spice latte take Yes, um, but I, I'm very excited. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad. Yes. Um, but uh, yeah, so like you know, fall movie previews always hit a little bit harder because this is stuff that's like, you know, it gets you going through the springs and the summers. I feel like which summers used to be fun, but now they kind of blow for the most part. Outside of like one or two exciting movies, um, springs are always tough, uh, but the falls are like increasingly kind of like loaded you know in terms of the percentage of like the top movies that come out in a given year i feel like it's just skews more and more towards fall than ever before i think that's fair uh 
this year is a little bit different. Uh, see, on paper, with big studio wigs refusing to meet the writers and the actors in the middle and kind of a little uncertainty about how these films are going to be marketed and what have you. But that that will come in our conversation, I imagine. But uh, that's just a little of the icing on top, I guess. Yeah. Are there any, like, big movies that we know about that have, like, already been pushed out to next year because... I mean, they probably wouldn't say it's because of the strikes, but I think it's fair to assume that, like, there's stuff that's probably ready that's either getting held or pushed because yeah, I they think know that there's going to be a gap in content otherwise. There's two that I know that were at least, like, a little bit interesting, and the first one was the film that was supposed to open the Venice Film Festival called, like, Challengers or something. And Oh, the Zendaya yeah. uh, tennis movie. Yeah, and that got pushed to next year. Oh, that's too bad. I was excited about that. And um, I guess like the new Ethan Cohen movie. Oh, yeah. It was like a heist movie and two actresses in it. Like Margaret Qualley, I think, was one of them. Yeah, yeah, it was. And uh, that one was also similarly pushed to next year. Okay. All right. Um, so there you go. I mean, maybe more, more to that. But I suspect most of the movies we're going to cover today are pretty well established 2023 titles right yeah i mean like i made a parenthesis of of titles that like we thought were coming this year and still have a good idea that they'll probably come but um they have not shown up at any of the fall fest like slates and um usually that's problem <laughs> to say like oh yeah. maybe it's not coming or maybe it's not ready or i mean these are big movies though like these are not movies that need fall fest to like you know boost their profile i'm not surprised i mean yeah we can start out if you want with those movies but i think they are probably four of the biggest movies killers of the flower moon like already premiered it can um it was ready last year i think from all accounts but they decided to hold it it screened at can and it's ready to go for the fall. Like the trailer has been out for a, quite a while now. Um, I think there was a lot of excitement because a lot of people saw that maybe for the first time during Oppenheimer. Um, and uh, I don't think that there's any world in which this doesn't come out in October as it's currently scheduled to. Yeah. I, I think like that might be the case that will still come. It's just weird that it's not going to have like a, festival premiere like either i mean like we don't know telluride yet i mean it could still like make an appearance there um but it's not gonna have like an american uh premiere because new york film festival has already dropped their schedule and tiff has uh dropped their schedule as well yeah i mean i guess the other question is like is there a point in having a big splashy premiere when you can't have any actors at it right uh, yeah I, I guess i mean like scorsese isn't enough i guess to or, I mean, is Scorsese going to be doing the bidding of the studios when everybody else is not? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, this is all, like, slightly uncharted territory. Um, but I do think that that movie is coming out. I would be surprised if any of the others aren't also coming out that we have kind of set aside um, just due to the fact that, like, we, they've already dropped trailers and I mean, yeah. they, they haven't really dropped anything for the color purple. That could that could still move. The trailer came out. Oh, did it? I didn't yeah, there's a trailer for it. Oh, I'm... <laughs> well, I know. How do I know that and you don't? I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't seem right. Uh, there is a trailer for the color purple. I saw it, and uh, and Oprah was doing a bot bunch to kind of pump it up uh, when it came out. That was pre-strike, I believe. So there was you know a little bit more happening for that movie at the time, but. The um, other so two I, movies we have listed are uh, Napoleon and Dune Part 2. And I thought Dune could likely move because, you know, the first Dune premiered at Venice. And it's weird that the second Dune isn't having a big festival splash. And um, but, they, but, they, but they say, like, uh, Dune 2 has a lot of the premium format screens reserved, like IMAX stuff for like yeah. a certain amount of time. And, like, if they moved it, they, they'd have a hard time, like, reserving those screens again. So... That, yeah. that might be a reason that they stay put. Sure. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, and then Napoleon is a Ridley Scott movie with Joaquin Phoenix and Vanessa Kirby. And that had a 
the trailer that I felt like got a lot of social media buzz at the time of its release. Um, yeah, I, I think if anything of these four was to get knocked into 24, it would be that. But I think they're all coming out this year. I think that they all have a, a fair amount of, you know, of an audience built in for them. Um, I know Killers of the Flower Moon, I, I believe, was like our both of our most anticipated movies of the year. At least it was mine. It was um, mine the year before. I it decided. was yours last year. Okay, yeah. so uh, we each select a most anticipated movie of the year. So like of the four possible movies that we could have picked for the last two years between us, that movie took up three of the four spots. <laughs> yeah. I, th- so, I, I think I ended up picking like Dead Reckoning this year. For, oh, did you? Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So we're we're super jazzed for that. Um, Dune 2, uh, we both uh, were big fans of the first, presumably both anticipating this one. Yeah. Yeah. Color Purple and Napoleon. Are you interested in these? Or are you more just kind of wait and see? More Napoleon. I the last like i think when we did our uh spielberg blind spots recently like i watched the color purple for the first time and i was like yeah yeah i'm i'm good with that <laughs> i think this is going to be a, a like i mean watch the trailer because it just looks you know it, it's different and i and i didn't include wonka on this list at all i don't well that's fine yeah that's that's that's, that's gonna fine. be a that's gonna be a, a fall movie for sure i guess but like I don't no know. one cares I don't know. It's from the director of Paddington. I don't care. <laughs> um, so, uh, so okay. So those are some of the bigger titles. Moving on to, I guess, movies that like you feel at least more confident. I'm curious. Like, I'm sometimes movies have premiere at festivals, but still get released the following year, right? Absolutely. So, I mean, any of these could get bumped, but um, but I guess we're going to at least get a glimpse of them this year as a community. Maybe I mean, not like, the entire uh, public is going to see these well, in 2023. Well, I should note that Neon and A24 aren't part of that big group and right. they've been getting waivers. So I think like their films are pretty like set to come out and they're going to just do business as normal. Yeah, um, and I don't know, I can't remember if I share this here, but my, like, sort of hot prediction is that a Neon or an A24 movie is going to win Best Picture at the Oscars this year. Okay, well, we'll, we'll see what... exactly that reason. Yeah, we'll see what uh, they have on the plate. Yes, indeed. Um, not from Neon or A24 is uh, Maestro. That's going to be a Netflix release uh, this fall. I think November, maybe December... Is yeah, it in th- it's, I think it's in theaters in November, and then it's going to be on the platform in December. Is that right? Yeah, I think like every month they're going to have like an opportunity for someone to see it. Like because I think it's going to be at Venice, and then it's going to be at New York Film Festival, and then theaters, and then Netflix. Right. <laughs> so. Okay. Perfect. Um, so this was obviously uh, all over the news over the past like two weeks or so after the trailer dropped. Um, because of Bradley Cooper and he directed the movie and he stars in it. It's about the composer uh, Leonard Bernstein. And um, in the trailer, we see him and uh, Carrie Mulligan, I believe, who is playing his wife. Yep. And uh, Bradley Cooper has this sort of like way oversized nose and um, he's playing, obviously, a Jewish character here. And there were some folks who felt like it was playing to stereotypes and a little bit insensitive. Um, and I don't know. I, I guess I wanted to give you a chance to just like weigh in there if, if you have any feelings about that or not. That's fine, too. But um, any thoughts on, on that whole thing as well as just general thoughts on the movie? Yeah, I saw the controversy. I've seen some great writing uh, about it. I think like Mark Harris did some writing. If you want to look up his article about okay. it, and um, I overall like even like the family came out and made a statement and said yeah. like Bradley was very much with them when making the movie, and like they know of the prosthetics he used and were were fine with ultimately what he decided. So I guess. Um, that's just how they decided to go with it. Uh, this this is definitely, at least it feels on paper like Netflix's big sw- swing this this season. Agreed. Um, 
that they have other things coming, but uh, yeah, this is like their prestige pick. Yeah, I think for sure um, the next movie we'll talk about it feels a little bit, you know, just not quite Oscar-y enough. But this is his first movie as a director since The Star is Born. And, um, you know, he's going to a, an old Oscar favorite, which is, you know, a biopic of a genius and somebody who uh, it, it, it's in at least partially in black and white or is it all in black and white? I think it's like partially in black and white. I, it's I funny. Too. I, I, made, I didn't watch. The tra- I haven't seen the trailer. Yeah, I made a joke like, if if it's a Netflix movie and it's black and white, then you know they're gonna pick that for like their Oscar bait because like <laughs> of of Roma and Mank also. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure, right? Yeah, that's funny. Um, so uh, yeah, you know, I think it's not my most anticipated movie, but like, no, I, 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 I the trailer put me to sleep. I thought it was oh, like terribly okay. boring. Okay. Um, not excited. I thought A Star is Born was just really, really good. So, I mean, I hope that he has something else like that in him. Um, maybe it's not this movie. Maybe it is. But, uh, you know, that's, that's something that's, I think, you know, still on the upper tier of uh, high-profile movies that are coming out in the fall. Gonna have um, to do a lot to beat another genius movie better than Oppenheimer, John. Well, yeah, that is, <laughs> it is going to be hard to play in the biopic territory this year with uh, how well received Oppenheimer was both by critics and the public. Um, you really sort of need to kind of blow that movie out of the water, I feel like. And I'm not sure that Maestro is going to get there on the still images uh, that I saw. Yeah, I don't think they have the hydrogen bomb ready. Okay. Fair <laughs> um, so, uh, also Netflix release for the fall. Uh, one that I'm more excited about is called The Killer, and this is the latest from David Fincher. Um, if you ever heard a title of a movie that feels more Fincherian, um, I think The Killer is right on. Um, so this is his first movie since Mank, which you just mentioned previously. Definitely a different movie than Mank, but more in line with the movies that we saw from him. Um, prior to Mank, uh, going back, you know, 10 years, really, since Gone Girl, which preceded Mank. Um, so this is one that I'm really excited about. Again, I can't remember if I talked about it on my most anticipated list. I suspect I did. But it feels like, for me, like, Killers of the Flower Moon is still my, like, most anticipated movie. But I think The Killer is right below it. You like yourself a David Fincher movie. I love David Fincher. Yeah, yeah. I love David Fincher. Um, blank Mank, checks Mank. covering him this fall. I'm super excited about that. Um, Mank was not my favorite, but I still thought it was like a, f- a f- good movie. It was it was doing some interesting things. I felt like because of his history with the material and his father was a co-writer and he was trying to get this made for a long time that like he was maybe a little bit too close to it to like give it the... F- touches that i wanted him to but it's not a bad movie and uh this just you know just seems more like what i love about him you know everything about this this title and uh michael uh, fassbender and tilda swinton are the stars which sounds delightful um john so. this is like one of the the, the movies that i'd put like like uh, talk about mank at, at least uh I'd like to see like a home video release of that and like the five bloods, which feels like almost very forgotten at this point. Oh my Uh, God. Yeah, I agree. That'd be great for home video release. Agreed. What about you? What, so what's your thought about the killer? I I don't actually have too many thoughts other than like, yeah, Fassbender and uh, Fincher probably watch it. I don't, I don't know too much about like the synopsis or anything of it. Just um, that was enough to really, grab my interest anyways and see how the project was going and um i guess we'll know very soon uh <laughs> how, how uh, the reaction to it. it feels like a movie very much like we've heard almost nothing of and then like all of a sudden it's gonna premiere and um yeah we'll, we'll find out how it works uh very cool so what else is uh on our on our list here yeah so the next one i am going to cover since i read about it today was uh priscilla which is the new Sofia Coppola film. Um, she did an interview today on, on Hollywood Reporter 
with uh, Priscilla Presley. They, they sat down together and, you know, that's a good way to advertise the film without having the, the stars available <laughs> um, to have the subject sit down for an interview. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, so- it sounds pretty interesting and it's right up Sofia Coppola's alley because like it's, it starts with young Priscilla Presley and coming of age and needing to navigate the world of being the girlfriend and then eventual wife of a, a superstar like Elvis Presley, you know, like living in that world of, Oh my God, there's Mrs. Presley. And, <laughs> and like being the heir of like every woman in existence. Um, and not only that, but how young she was when she was uh, involved with uh, Elvis originally. So uh, that, that sounds like something that, uh, is right in the wheelhouse for Sofia Coppola, and uh, um, regardless of, I, I wasn't familiar with like the stars. I think like Lordy or something is his last name. Yeah, and, from he, uh, that. What's that HBO show about the kids doing drugs and sex in high school? Yeah, Before, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. He 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 plays Elvis. Okay, well that's yeah, interesting bar. Yeah, <laughs> so. Um, we'll see how that goes that one's that one's uh i think playing venice and and then it's the centerpiece film for the new york film festival um another one on here that i was really looking forward to and i'm gonna make sure i mention it was the boy and the heron which is the new name for uh how do you live which is oh yeah that's right the, the new hayao miyazaki film it has been named the opening night film for the Toronto International Film Festival. And, you know, it's continued to have this, like, miraculous run because, like, it opened in Japan and they did zero press. They just opened it with no trailers, no no images. The yeah. first images of the film have just finally started coming out after, like, a month that it's been in Japan <laughs> ahead <laughs> of its, like, uh, U.S. dates in Toronto. Yeah. Um, U.S. Canada dates, rather. And uh, so we'll play TIFF, and then they said that we'll play New York, um, a spotlight piece. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Uh, I know that it's been in the works for at least seven years. So Yeah. Always excited for his movies. Um, and then, like, other movies that I really know stuff about on this list that I have in front of me is, like, The Holdovers is something I talked about. Yep. Um, that's the new Alexander Payne movie starring Paul Giamatti. And uh, that one's playing at TIFF. I saw a trailer for that uh, in front of Oppenheimer, I believe. Yeah, I was like, I was like, oh, sweet. Paul Giamatti's doing movies again. He's not like in Billions Prison because like <laughs> I say Billions Prison. He's probably making a perfectly good paycheck being on that show that I, I guess I've never seen. I feel like nobody knows what that actually is. Yeah, it's been on for like six or seven years. And, you know, yeah. he's, he's, he's getting paychecks and all the time. So good, good for him. Succession. Yeah, good for him. But um. You know, I, I fell in love with him as an actor originally when he appeared in Alexander Payne's Sideways. So it's nice to see them teaming up again. And the story very much looks like, oh, grouchy college professor uh, takes care of some kids and he becomes like almost like a father figure to one of them type. Yeah, deal. but it's um, not like the blind side. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> right. That fake movie that. You know, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the fake parents. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I thought I thought that looked fun. Um, I liked that the trailer was like the classic like '90s like horror. It was, like, horror. yeah. I think I enjoyed that as much as like, I, yeah, the, I'm gonna enjoy the movie. But, um, but yeah, definitely, you know, I think it'll be interesting. Um, the uh, so a couple others that I wanted to point out: uh, May December, which is the new Todd Haynes movie. I loved me some Todd Haynes. His, I think. Oh, well, he did the Velvet Underground movie, I believe. Which Yeah, I that was see. his last one on Apple+. Yeah, Plus. but prior to that, it was Dark Waters, which I loved. I thought it was amazing. One of my favorite movies of 2019, I think. And, um, you know, he's, I just don't think he's, like, really, like, had any misses. Carol was uh, before that sometime. Safe is amazing. Far From Heaven is amazing. Like, he just makes really good, solid movies. Um, so I'm really excited about this one. It stars Julianne Moore, who he's made many movies with and is an amazing actress, so I'm super pumped for that. Um, 
in the uh, Ferrari movie, which yeah, the the May December is going to be playing. I think it's the opening night film at New York Film Festival. Oh, okay, cool. And Ferrari um, is the closing night film. Ferrari is Michael Mann, who is another one of my favorite directors, um, and who hasn't. His, when was the last time he made a movie? It was Black Hat. Yeah, it must be. I think so. I don't think he's made anything in between. So um, that's exciting. <laughs> it, this this was a um, dream project for uh, the director here, Michael Mann, and I guess he's been trying for a lot of years to get it off the ground. And like some people thought, like it might have been buried after like Ford v Ferrari came right. out. Yeah. Um, well, I think that most people just thought that he got buried after Black Hat. Came yeah. Out. yeah. Right. Because that like that movie launched in uh, January, which was very odd. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, um, but he has Adam Driver as his lead in Ferrari and, you know, Adam's drivers worked with just about everybody. So, (laughs) right. Yeah. Um, he too is in pre-production also. Yeah. I think, I think he, I think I saw him, um, Michael Mann do an interview like either yesterday or today where he was talking about both movies, Ferrari and like he too, and how he just keep on making, keep on working forever type deal. God, that is going to be such a scene when that movie comes out. I can't wait. Um, so, uh, so yeah. And then there's like a handful of movies that like played really well at like can that well, are going to be carrying on into the fall festival circuit. Right? That's right, John. And also I wanted to mention, I put on here, even though it's like playing like out of competition at Venice, but it was the, the came mutiny court martial, which is now William Friedkin's last film. He passed cool. away uh since the last time we recorded and uh you know the director of sorcerer and the exorcist uh the french connection and to live and die in la among other films so pretty prolific director um so uh i know there's probably a few people out there who are interested in seeing uh his his official last film um that sounds yeah i don't know anything about it that was one of the movies on the list i'm just like i never heard of this but um uh but obviously yeah we didn't really acknowledge his passing because it's been a while since um since it happened relative to our record um but that was you know sad news and i'm excited to know that he's got another movie in the pipeline that you know will have more opportunities to celebrate him as the year goes on perhaps right um you were mentioning some stuff that we had already heard about from can which would be something like the palm door winner and that anatomy anatomy of a fall which had its first trailer released recently um that one stars uh sandra huller and and one of her two of her can can movies <laughs> the other one being the zone of interest um, yeah right she she was in both big winners. Yeah. Um but uh Anatomy of a Fall pretty much is about a woman who is at her house and all of a sudden she has discovered that her husband has fallen off their building and died. And she is um number one prime suspect just by the nature of being his wife and being there. Um, she doesn't have much of an alibi, even though, uh, according to the trailer, she insists that she didn't kill her husband. So um, there's gonna, it's like a, a courtroom drama in some sense, and I, I, I always love those. Um, uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, I remember at like as Can was unfolding, there was some talk that it was like a little bit of a sleepy competition this year, and that you know this wasn't like peak cinema for this movie to be winning the palm but at the same time like it felt like something that i don't know maybe more approachable than nor the palm door winner normally is so i was kind of like more interested and i was like yeah i love courtroom dramas like this one's gonna have like a weird euro twist like cool it sounds all right yeah it's not like uh, the aforementioned zone of interest which is directed yeah. nothing glazer's first movie since um the scarlett johansson yeah. alien movie came out under the skin under the skin so a decade ago and uh zone of interest is about like a german family that goes idly about their lives while living next door to a uh, a camp 
during World War II. So not exactly happy, fun time. No, that is going to be just probably a brutal watch. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know. I was going to have to take like a lot of willpower to get myself psyched up enough to watch that. But yeah, um, I, wa- I watched that first person Holocaust movie years ago. Saw. Yeah, so I saw that like one the Palm Door like was highly acclaimed, and I was like, I don't really want to see that one either. But I was like, maybe it's my duty to see it, and I kind of feel that way about Zone of Interest. So yeah, yeah, I hear you. Um, not looking forward to it though. Yeah, not really. <laughs> uh, uh, but you know, fair enough. Uh, so a couple others, uh, poor things is going to be the new uh, movie from um, Yorgos Yorgo Lanthimos. Lanthimos, right? who uh, did uh, The Favorite and The Lobster, um, Dogtooth, and this one, like The Favorite, is going to star Emma Stone. Um, and, uh, you know, they've done a great job together before. Kind of excited about that one. I've been a fan of his run of movies of late. Um, and uh, And what else? Dumb Money, that's going to be the first of, I'm sure, many GameStop movies. Yeah, I, I'm i I'm not really wild about seeing that one, but I, I figured, like, it has enough, like, actors in it to, like, and I think it's the director of um, I, Tanya. And, yeah, it is. Yeah. And um, much of McCall, uh, Coella. So I figured that was at least worth mentioning. I think there's almost no chance that like they're going to actually do the story justice, because <laughs> um, there's it's like very complicated and layered and weird, um, and I'm just I don't have any faith that like Hollywood's going to get it right. I Even though so. I think I'm sure I'll watch it because it's just going to be like one of those movies that's going to be easy to watch. It's like the opposite of Zone of Interest, which is like. It's, yeah, it's it's going to be so broad that it's going to be like easy to digest, but like totally empty calories. And the yeah. other one is just like all fiber and <laughs> you know, yeah. vitamins. And I'm just like, ugh. Yeah, it's, it's just like fiber cake. Yeah. Um, but some of the ones on here that I may believe that you don't know too much about. Yeah. yeah. Well, everything else. So go ahead. Okay. <laughs> So I think Hitman is a new movie from Richard Linklater. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, with uh, Glenn Powell as the lead. Um, I think that's probably going to play Telluride and then Tiff. Um, I th- heard about a new movie called Foe, which is making its world premiere at New York Film Festival. This is by the director of uh, Lion and... I forget what he did after Lion. Um, I think his name's like Garth Davies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He tried to... I, well, I don't want to say try. I think he did. He just didn't get a release, but he like made a Jesus movie. Oh. Um, was it like that Mary Magdalene, Magdalene Maybe. movie? Maybe. I don't remember. Um, anyways, this one... Uh, has like... It was. Her- sorry. It was Mary Magdalene. Yeah, I think this one has uh, Saoirse Ronan in it. Oh, and, cool. um I know her. Yeah, her. And uh, what's his name from After Sun? Oh, uh, uh, Mescal. Yeah. So I was like, why had I never heard of this movie? And if it doesn't play a film festival, then like there's something wrong with it. Um, <laughs> yeah. But l- luckily it came up. Tell me about Eileen. I don't know too much about Eileen. I think that one played Sundance, and people were pretty uh, ecstatic about that one. Um, let's see. I'll give you some more. Anne Hathaway is in that one. Oh. And uh, I read somewhere that it's going to be playing um, at Fantastic Fest for okay. its like uh, Texas premiere or something. <laughs> so. Um, let's see. Uh, what else is on here? Saltburn is the new uh, movie from the director of Promising Young Woman. Oh yes, of course. And that Emerald, is Emerald Fennel. Yeah, I think that one is opening the London Film Festival. Okay, makes sense. She is British. 
Yeah, so she uh, of uh, Midge from Barbie movie fame. Yes. <laughs> um, I think All Dirt Roads Taste of Salt played at Sundance as well. It was pretty highly acclaimed, and um, I heard pretty good things about that. That one's showing up at New York Film Festival. And the other one that I have on this list is one that doesn't really have a date yet, but I'm excited for it. It's uh, the new um, movie by Jeff Nichols of... Oh, yes. Of... Uh, Mud. Mud and... Uh, what's that? Midnight Special and Loving. Yep. And yep. for a lot of years, he was trying to develop a movie for Fox like an alien nation like remake or something like that and uh, he was just kind of stuck with that and then when they got bought by disney they kind of canned it mm. and so he like lost like five years <laughs> That's um, tough. yeah but his new movie the bike riders uh stars tom hardy austin butler jody comer michael shannon and others um according according to this this wikipedia page which you know, don't trust it. It says it. They they the page says that it will premiere at the Telluride Film Festival, <laughs> which <laughs> nobody should know like what's playing there yet until they land. So, um, but I guess that's a good that's a good guess that it would probably play there. I guess so. Yeah, I'm looking forward to another film by him. And you know uh, what what these film festivals did uh, specifically TIFF, they found a lot of movies by. Um, actors who were directing movies and so that the way they could kind of like get by the sag after a strike provisions and say like oh if you're a director you can go like promote your movie so like i guess like i think there's like a anna kendrick movie that's coming to tiff and it's like about like game shows or something like that like i guess like a serial killer was invited on to like a dating <laughs> game famously and they didn't know um, I'm just like I don't want to see an Anna Kendrick directed movie, but I could see why they invited it. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, but uh, I I think like even though there's some uncertainty around the fall fest with like what movies are actually coming, or if there was delays, or if like maybe we're not seeing certain movies that they thought they were gonna push, there's still gonna be like plenty to see. Um, maybe not the traditional stuff from like the big heavy hitters that we're used to seeing. But um, I still think there's plenty here. Um, yeah, I agree. Um, I, I mean, I didn't even mention the, the, I guess there's like other movies by neon and a 24 that aren't playing these fall festivals that are, that are still slated to come out at the end of December. And I'm getting, there's tons of stuff that like, yeah. we probably don't even know much about that is going to, you know, pop up and get people excited, especially you have to think that like, if the studios are thinking about their, you know, kind of this inevitable lag in content that like, if they can purchase something that like, you know, is, is independent right now at one of these festivals and release it while it's hot, that like, that would maybe make it easier to push something back into next year. So I do think that there's definitely a chance for that. Um, but, uh, you know, it's all a little bit unknown and, and we'll kind of see how it plays out. Um, even though I think we had a really good summer in terms of the box office with Barbie and Oppenheimer kind of being the big stories there, I do feel like that, like, there might be some cost consciousness as well. So, you know, on the flip side, it could be like, well, we're not going to spend the kind of money we would otherwise at a festival because we don't really know what's happening with our financials right now. Yeah. Um, I, I think they said like the big ones and, and like Netflix and stuff like that weren't going to be able to purchase these films because like they would have to agree to the agreements if they wanted to. Oh, interesting. Them. Okay. So, yeah. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, we'll we'll see what's going to happen. I just hope that you know more of these movies are successful than not, and that you know we have plenty of exciting things to talk about as the rest of the year goes on. Yeah. Um. So, anything else you want to add before we uh, move on here? No, I think we can move on to our next segment. 
Uh, well, our next segment is me telling people how they can discover and enjoy the show. So, um, first of all, you can follow, I should, guess I should say discover and enjoy us and our content online, but you can follow our podcast on X at It's a Big Pod. <laughs> and you can follow Max at MH Colville. That's still going on. I kind of locked my account recently, okay. but like they could probably just ask to follow. Fair then... enough. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, you can because you always... know he's taking away blocking apparently. So I mean, every oh, day Jesus there's Christ. every uh, day there's fun fun stuff. Yeah, indeed. Um, you can send us an email at uh, it's a pictures at gmail dot com with uh, your favorite fall movies. And John, or... both 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 me and the it's the pictures podcast accounts are live on blue sky so okay blue sky there you go yeah so um whether this is this whole thing is totally busted now (laughs) i've been doing this for like six years um you can subscribe to the podcast on apple Podcasts or any other app while you're there please leave us a review five stars will help other people discover and enjoy the show um, we are on Letterbox at It's the Pictures, um, where you can see various lists and what we've been watching. And finally, you can subscribe to the newsletter at It's the Pictures.substack.com. Max recently wrote about movies that he's excited about for the falls, but there's not a ton of crossover, so you can read about some titles that we maybe didn't cover so much on the podcast. Anything else interesting you've written about lately? Yeah, just for fun, I wrote about the two episode premiere of Star Wars Ahsoka, that because uh, Disney was kind enough to send over screeners, and I was like, well, this this will be of interest to people, so I might as well watch it and review it. So, uh, if you want to hear my thoughts on the new Star Wars spinoff, they're on on the newsletter. Cool. All right. Um, so, uh, yeah, I guess we'll do, uh, now what we've been watching. Um, and, uh, I haven't really been watching a ton in terms of movies. Um, after we saw Barbie, uh, my wife was interested in going back and watching some of the previous Greta Gerwig movies. So first we watched Francis Ha, which we hadn't seen in a long time. I just think that movie is the best. Um... And I'm not going to, you know, just go on about it, but it was on Netflix. I think it still is. It it just rules so hard. It's just the best. So highly recommend Lady Bird. I mean, it feels like I, I felt after watching Lady Bird, like only maybe slightly let down because it's just, I don't think it's quite as good as Francis Ha, but it is still outstanding. Um, so, uh, yeah, really just highly recommend. Didn't rewatch a little women, but maybe going to get to that soon. And, uh, I think that the third season of only murders in the building has been very fun so far. So it's a little TV recommendation as well. There's, I think four episodes out. I really liked the most recent one. It was very funny. Um, so, so good stuff there. Um, what have you been watching? Okay, so since you mentioned TV, I'll mention TV that I'm watching. I'm not really watching too much outside of like those, the, that review that I did. I, yeah. The only thing that I'm really following is this HBO show in its third and final season called How To of John Wilson. Yeah, yeah. And I love that program. Yeah, I, I've heard it's I, really good. I should probably catch up with it. I think I think it's hilarious. Um, each episode is like a half an hour mini movie where um, documentary filmmaker John Wilson like ruminates about a a topic and normally he 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 thinks about that topic for about eight minutes until he gets uh sidetracked into something else um but it's just like a killer feat of editing and uh script writing um it's executive produced by nathan fielder um so so you know uh the background of of behind the show is also pretty crazy um yeah, I, I just really dig it. I'm gonna be sad when it when it's off air in a few weeks. Um, and the other thing I've been watching, I, I decided to I try to cross off some like big movies off my like haven't seen list, and few of them probably are as famous as Jacques Tati's Playtime. Yeah. Um, this one has been on my list for years, and. I think one time I tried to watch it, I fell asleep, so I didn't count that as a watch. 
Um, this time I was like 40 minutes in and I was struggling to stay awake, but I made it. <laughs> okay. And then I loved the second half. So if you're unfamiliar with it, um, Toddy had this character almost like um, the classic uh, silent film stars like Chaplin had the tramp and I think Harold Lloyd had his uh, his character. Anyways, uh, Toddy had his as well. And this movie kind of sees Toddy like go through this immaculate uh, production where it, it was just, they called it like Toddy Town because like he had like buildings and almost erected to to make this movie happen and it's just like really memorable sets um it was one of the movies that Greta Gerwig mentioned that she was uh kind of influenced by one of the 30 that she was influenced yeah I saw by the list, when, yeah. <laughs> yeah when she was making Barbie and um yeah it's it's a very I, I'd say it's not an easy watch only because like there's not a central narrative through it. And like, yeah. there's like five different stories going on throughout the course. If you like want to follow like a certain person um, and see what their adventure is, it's like almost like choose your own adventure book as you're watching it. And it's, I don't find like his humor, like fall on the floor laughing humor. It's more like, Oh, I see what he did there. I'm a crack a smile. Yeah. Right. Um, that there's like a, a scene where like they walk, they like break a glass door and this guy who is supposed to be helping people into the restaurant um, pretends that he's the door now. Cause he, cause it was a glass door, you know? So he just like moves his arm. Like he's opening a glass door. <laughs> and I'm like, that that's such like a silly um, joke, but you know, it, it kind of hits. Um, the, the second hour includes this like 45 minute segment where they're um, in a restaurant. And the restaurant is just like absolutely like a disaster. It's like almost like the architect is there and they were opening that same night. Um, So like every time there's a problem in the restaurant and there's lots of problems, they're like, get the architect. And he's like writing things down. And it's just like a lot of like organized chaos. Because of course, Toddy knew everything that was going to happen and planned it out. Uh, so it's just really clever. The movie was originally like filmed on 70 millimeter. And I imagine like if you could see it like on 70 millimeter, that'd be like amazing. Yeah. Um, because like a film like this, just, you, it's just not something you typically see in that format. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I appreciate it. And I, I think I get why people uh, really admire it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, not like my most favorite, you know, kind of old school brand of comedy, but um, they're pleasant movies. I haven't seen this one actually, You're... but I've seen others. Have you seen? Well, you've seen like Mister Hula's yeah. Holiday. Or... Yeah, yeah. I mean, like they're they're, they're kind of cute with, the, with their humor. Yeah, they're not exactly right. like. I I think it's a, it's definitely a different humor than Chaplin you utilized because I, I find like Chaplin stuff was like very funny but yeah agreed um uh, maybe, cool. maybe, maybe maybe it's that french humor <laughs> just goes so. my head. <laughs> yeah i'm not really sure um you know exactly what makes it feel different than movies that are even older than it i think at least partially it's like they're so much less plot driven than some of like the chaplin movies which you know, feels like there's more story going on. Yeah, at things. least they, 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 have, they have, like, the uh, over titles. Exactly, them, right, like, yeah. So I think talking. maybe that's part of it, but um, but yeah, so that's, I'm glad you caught up with that, though. Um, yeah, and John, I also uh, watched the 4K release of Roman Holiday. Have, have you seen that one in a while? Uh, the movie? I haven't yeah. seen in, yeah, probably, like, almost 10 years. Uh, that that movie is uh still very good. Very good. <laughs> if you haven't watched that one in a while, it's, it's it's a pretty enjoyable movie. Awesome. Very good. Very good. So I think that's about it for us this week. Unless you have anything else you wanted to add. No, I'm I'm looking forward to hitting my couch. All right. Sounds good. I won't <laughs> keep you from it any longer. But uh, 
<laughs> we uh, thank you so much for listening, and we'll talk to you again soon. Yep. Bye. Bye.